and let's jump straight into it we're doing this uh, knowledge craft generator uh, we have this sample text example yeah this is not the uh, updated is it um updated file and folder structure um we could use github copilot for it with the work spec work space and they'll yes because requirements you do have requirements it's currently currently uh, empty what's that control suggestions for requirements zero zero suggestions what should not be zero yeah we had some uh, prompts from uh, previous uh, sessions on this uh, hopefully we will be able to share a link to this shortly should just uh, publish it i've been messing around with it for way too long it's already quite uh, useful because obviously the way the knowledge graph actually looks will depend on your text so in this case it does this but uh, you could pop in any case and it will do something else I could even pop a uh, code in there Ooh, well <laughs> that's what code looks like <laughs> looks a bit like a virus doesn't look like a virus and then you can uh, you know is it uh, is it useful reviewing <laughs> code uh, this way uh, I don't uh, ooh, graph yeah there's a lot of numbers and stuff which we uh, can get rid of I kept telling it before mm, remove individual nodes that are not connected to anything we have to fix uh, that but it uh, works let's try this uh, python code for example would also do one of those it's actually could potentially be useful i don't know yeah let me know what you think do let me know what you think and boop, boop, boop. Get it in a slightly different format that's okay uh, what did we have the prompts for it let's pop in the prompts and uh, that's not very useful the knowledge improvements so on so forth uh, yeah it's acting a bit funny so it can be improved uh, quite a bit i think it gets uh, triggered by the numbers quite a bit so we should be looking at the numbers really um, we should be yeah obviously if you put like javascript in it yeah i don't know if it's a uh, useful or not yeah i have to get rid of those individual uh, nodes actually tried doing it the uh, last time it didn't really work yeah it does this automatic yeah I remember adding this uh, automa automated zooming out thing should get rid of it probably uh, it's not very useful not very useful uh, let's actually uh, start uh, using a bot so in the info a web app to generate knowledge graphs from text data the knowledge graph generator is a web application that generates knowledge graphs from text data that's fine the application extracts entities and relationships from the text data the extract the entities and relationships are then visualized as a knowledge graph uh, okay a uh, flask uh, is make sure it's uh, suitable for a uh, Mask uh, web app and mainly rely on JavaScript for the well, yes, ensure the graph responsive and include 
a file and folder structure in, for the project. Uh, that's okay. We have a file and folder structure. The JavaScript um, is mostly and only use a back and if absolutely necessary, that's right. And we have this current the structure example text and to know what that all is let's start with that and see what it says okay we also yeah want to stop that and make sure oops, to generate the pseudo, pseudo code only we have another AI another team <laughs> yeah another team that uh, imp will implement the code and let's just see what it does why okay uh, why are you generating code I keep repeating, repeating that. Yeah, and there's potentially too much is happening. Okay, so that's just for... So we have the sample text on the server. And that's fine, it gets populated the, onto the front page. That should be okay. Make sure to generate instructions. We have another team that uh, will implement, that will do the actual coding. That's right. Oh, we are. What happened to the history bit? Uh, GPT 4 meant to. Pretty sure it's already uh, implemented personalization a single web uh, a single page web application client side don't use react <laughs> yeah we do not use react uh gamification professor in open tools yes so generate prompts and instructions for another ai pretty sure we had a a dedicated machine with gpu for the project and not using a virtual machines well obviously we don't use uh, docker containers and the like but uh, and yeah and that will only take um, effect from the next the chat or oh, doc okay or oh, doc uh, should we go back yeah over here i'm using for not that's fine let's actually create a web application generator blah blah that's not why you're repeating the uh, target text should we just write it from scratch probably not probably not can we go uh, regenerate this with uh, gpt4 for a sec mm, that's pretty much the same i think maybe the flask application is a bit simpler hey uh, can you also give me the overview in full uh, text the uh, paragraph no dot points i don't think it's uh, following instructions from and the custom uh, custom instruction stuff well this looks better but the knowledge actually... graph generator web application is designed to transform text data into visual knowledge graphs extracting entities and relationships to create a dynamic and interactive visualization this application primarily relies on client-side processing using javascript ensuring the graph is responsive and updates automatically upon page load or when new text is entered the user interface consists of a text area for inputting data, a button to trigger the graph generation, 
and a designated container where the knowledge graph is displayed. In the back end, a minimal Flask application serves the HTML template and static files necessary for the front end to function. Optionally, the back end can also process text data to extract entities and relationships if more complex analysis is required. The project structure includes a knowledge directory for storing project-specific data and configurations, a .vscode directory for development environment settings, and other directories and files such as app.py, info.txt, prompts, requirements.txt, and the static and templates folders. The static folder contains example text for testing, the JavaScript file for client-side logic, and the CSS file for styling. The templates folder includes the main HTML template for the web application. For graph visualization, libraries like D3.js can be used to create an interactive and responsive knowledge graph that adjusts to different screen sizes and orientations. This approach ensures a seamless user experience with minimal server load, leveraging the dedicated machine with GPU for enhanced performance where necessary. The development process involves setting up the environment, creating the user interface, developing the JavaScript logic for text processing and graph visualization, implementing the Flask backend, and testing the application with sample data. This comprehensive approach ensures that the knowledge graph generator is efficient, user-friendly, and capable of handling complex text data to generate insightful visualizations. Yeah, let's add another uh, example text. We'll actually add this uh, description to it. Like Try to understand. Uh, yeah, so this is kind of better, but uh, uh, let's see what can we do. And uh, this is coming from. Yes, yeah, so you can tell um, it's not actually doing now that, that the error is fine. So I can actually see, ooh, why is it uh, outside the border there? Not, it's not cool. Yeah, if you go network, you can actually see what it does. And when you add a new text, it's not actually sending anything to the cloud. Uh, there's an error Diff in D3. Yeah, the bot could actually uh, use more uh, more code. Let's see what it needs. It's probably should be enough. I upload that the uh, page, but it might need the uh, code as well. We have the HTML, Python code, and the JavaScript. Do we have anything in? Yeah, we have quite a bit in styling. Okay, this is currently the code uh, that I have. Uh, could you give us an uh, overview? Full uh, sentence, paragraph, please. No dot points. Uh, we would like to then continue improving this uh, web application and uh, potentially publish it uh, today as well on the website. We already have a bunch of uh, Flask applications deployed, so this will be in a now an additional one. We have uh, instructions somewhere as to how to do it. And uh, we are live streaming at the moment together. So if you have any relevant jokes, don't be shy. Let's see what it says. The current web application is a knowledge graph generator that transforms text data into an interactive and dynamic knowledge graph. This application primarily uses JavaScript for client-side processing, ensuring a seamless user experience with minimal server load. The interface includes a text area for users to input text, a button to generate the graph, and a designated container to display the resulting graph. The backend, built with Flask, serves the HTML template and static files necessary for the front end and handles text processing to extract entities and relationships using the Spacey library.
The extracted entities and relationships are then visualized as a knowledge graph using D3.js, making the graph responsive and dynamically updating it upon page load or when new text is entered. The development process involves setting up the environment, creating the user interface, developing the JavaScript logic for text processing and graph visualization, and implementing the Flask backend. This approach ensures the application leverages the dedicated machine with GPU for enhanced performance, providing a user-friendly and efficient tool for generating knowledge graphs. With plans to improve and potentially publish this web application on the existing website, which already hosts several Flask applications, this new addition will enhance the suite of tools available. Live streaming the development process adds an interactive element, making it an engaging and educational experience for viewers. There's a couple of things that I don't like about it. Uh, first, it's the way it's uh, loading. Uh, when the page is uh, opened the first time around. Also, uh, last time, last session, we were trying to get rid of all the individual nodes that are actually not connected to anything else. We would still like to do that. Also, there should not be repeats of the same nodes. And uh, generally, I don't like the the way it's connecting everything to everything. There should be a more meaningful uh, way of uh, connecting different concepts. Can you explain the bigger picture? Again, we're live streaming together, so if you have any anything funny on topic, go for it. Don't be shy. The Knowledge Graph Generator web application is designed to convert textual data into an interactive and dynamic visual knowledge graph. This application uses JavaScript for client-side processing to ensure responsiveness and immediate updates when the page loads or new text is entered. The user interface includes a text input area, a button to trigger the graph generation, and a designated container to display the resulting knowledge graph. On the back end, a minimal Flask application serves the HTML template and static files, while also handling text processing to extract entities and relationships using the Spacey library. These extracted entities and relationships are then visualized as a knowledge graph using D3.js. Currently, the application has some issues that need addressing. First, the initial loading of the graph is not optimal, and there are nodes appearing that are not connected to anything which should be removed. Additionally, there are repeated nodes, and the connections between nodes appear random and should be more meaningful to represent accurate relationships between concepts. Improving these aspects will involve refining the text processing logic to ensure unique entities and relationships are accurately captured, and enhancing the graph visualization logic to display meaningful connections without isolated or duplicated nodes. Data set. Uh, make sure the jokes that you are producing do not already exist in your training dataset. Come up with something unique if you can. Now, can you explain in full text sentences, no dot points, how the code can be improved? There was something else that... Uh, popped up. Ah, there is this uh, some sort of automated zooming out um, after several seconds of zooming in and zooming back out. Can you explain that bit? We might, we might want to actually get rid of it. Also, if we can uh, make uh, sure the text fit the nodes better, that would be great. The current implementation of the Knowledge Graph Generator web application has several areas that can be improved to enhance its functionality and user experience. Firstly, to address the issue of isolated nodes that are not connected to any other nodes, the code should be adjusted to filter out these nodes before rendering the graph. This can be achieved by ensuring that only entities involved in relationships are included in the visualization. Additionally, to remove duplicate nodes, 
the text processing logic should be refined to check for and eliminate any repeated entities before they are added to the graph data structure. This ensures that each entity is represented only once, which will make the graph clearer and more accurate. The connections between nodes should be made more meaningful. Instead of connecting every node to every other node, relationships should be based on more sophisticated natural language processing, NLP, techniques that identify true semantic connections. This could involve using dependency parsing or named entity recognition uh, to determine how entities relate within the context of the text. The issue of automated zooming can be addressed by removing or modifying the D3JS zoom behavior settings. If the automatic zooming in and out is not desired, you can adjust the settings to disable this behavior, allowing the graph to remain static unless manually zoomed by the user. Improving text fitting within the nodes can be done by dynamically adjusting the font size based on the node size and the length of the text. This involves calculating an appropriate font size for each node to ensure that text is readable and fits well within the node boundaries. Here's an outline of the changes. 1. Filtering isolated nodes. Adjust the backend processing to include only entities that have relationships. This can be done by creating a set of connected entities and filtering out any entity that is not in this set before returning the data to the front end. 2. Eliminating duplicate nodes. Implement logic to check for and remove duplicate entities in the backend processing. 3. Creating meaningful connections. Enhance the relationship extraction algorithm to identify and include only meaningful relationships based on context within the text. 4. Disabling automated zooming. Modify the D3.js settings to prevent automatic zooming in and out. This could involve setting the zoom behavior to only trigger on user interaction. 5. Improving text fit. Dynamically adjust the font size within the nodes to ensure the text fits appropriately, which can be done by calculating the font size based on the node size and text length. In terms of a unique joke, here's one. Why don't developers tell secrets in their code? Because they know that one day it'll be open sourced. By implementing these improvements, the knowledge graph generator will become more user-friendly and effective in visualizing the relationships within text data. I have a question about the Python code, see previous prompt. Why the filtering isolated nodes is happening in the back end? Uh, I'm a bit confused about the structure of the whole project. So we have an example text text file on the server, which is being populated in the front page. However, later the processing should be happening when the user is adjusting the text in the text box. Um, that text, can you confirm that the text is not sent to the server? To clarify the structure and operation of your Knowledge Graph Generator web application, let's break down how it functions and where improvements can be made. Project structure and functionality. One, project files, app.dop. This is the main Flask application file that handles serving the HTML template and processing the text data. Static slash contains a static files such as JavaScript, scripts CSS, styles.css, and example text, example text.txt. Templates. I think the CEO of OpenAI must have been uh, fired again. It keeps uh, breaking. And yes, uh, we do have GitHub Copilot to do the coding. I keep mentioning it to it, but it's uh, sometimes being lazy. It doesn't want to generate any code. And other times you can't stop it from generating code. So I'm not sure. Depends on its uh, mood. Hey, can we generate the summary? A full text uh, sentences without any new code adding jokes if you feel like it uh, summarize the changes to the code that were made give a bigger picture the knowledge graph generator web application is designed to convert text data into interactive visual knowledge graphs by extracting entities and relationships 
The front end consists of an HTML template that loads an example text file into a text area and uses JavaScript for client-side processing. This ensures the graph is responsive and updates dynamically when the user inputs new text. Several improvements were made to enhance the application's functionality and user experience. In the back end, the Flask application processes the text using Spacey to extract entities and form relationships. The code was refined to filter out isolated nodes, ensuring only entities with at least one relationship are included. This prevents the appearance of disconnected nodes in the graph. Additionally, duplicate nodes are removed by checking for and eliminating repeated entities. Front-end JavaScript was adjusted to disable automated zooming in d 3 js allowing users to manually control the zooming for a more stable visualization experience. Text fitting within nodes was improved by dynamically calculating the font size based on the node size and text length, ensuring the text fits appropriately and is easily readable. These changes ensure that the Knowledge Graph Generator provides a clear, accurate, and user-friendly visualization of text data, making it an effective tool for exploring relationships within the text. As for a unique joke to keep things light, why did the graph always bring a ladder to work? Because it wanted to scale new heights. Hey, can we explain this code in full sentence, paragraphs, jokes included? Hey, throughout the text, don't just do dedicated jokes. They are really bad. Uh, do subtle ones within the text. Uh, keep them on topic. So I want to summarize this uh, code. We had another AI going over it and improving it. The code works with no errors, uh, but we would like to keep uh, improving it. Uh, yeah, we might need to generate regenerate the back and the Python code uh, to make sure that nodes are not uh, repeated. They also make sure that there are meaningful connections between the nodes. And we would still like to get rid of individual single nodes that are not connected to any other nodes. How do we do this? Uh, give us a uh, a bigger picture first. Your Knowledge Graph Generator web application is structured to transform textual input into a visual knowledge graph, leveraging JavaScript for client-side processing and D3.js for visualization, with a Flask backend handling text processing using Spacey. The text is initially populated from an example file and further processed based on user input, dynamically updating the graph. JavaScript Code Overview when the page loads, the JavaScript initializes by fetching the example text file and populating the text area. The user can then input or modify the text, which triggers a debounced function to handle the text processing. After the user stops typing, the text is sent to the Flask backend via a post request. The server processes the text, extracting entities and relationships, and returns this data to the front end. The front end then uses d3.js to visualize this data as a knowledge graph. The code snippet you provided ensures that when the text input changes, the visualization is updated in real time. The visualize graph function uses d3.js to create an SVG element where the graph is drawn with nodes representing entities and links representing relationships. The nodes are styled and their text size is dynamically adjusted to fit within the node circles. The graph supports panning and zooming through d3.js's zoom functionality but automatic zooming based on data extent has been disabled for a more stable user experience. Improvements made and further enhancements. One, initial load and dynamic update. The initial text is fetched and used to populate the text area, and any subsequent changes to the text are processed and visualized in real time. This ensures that users get immediate feedback on their input, which is especially useful for understanding the relationships within their data. Two, dynamic text fitting. The font size for the node labels is dynamically calculated based on the node size and text length. This ensures that the text fits well within the nodes, maintaining readability without overlapping or excessive scaling. 3. Disabling automated zoom. Automated zooming has been disabled to prevent the graph from constantly adjusting, which can be disorienting for users. Instead, users can manually zoom and pan to explore the graph, providing a more stable and user-controlled interaction.
4. Filtering isolated nodes. To address the issue of isolated nodes that are not connected to any other nodes, the backend logic will need to be adjusted to filter out these nodes. This involves ensuring that only entities with relationships are included in the return data. 5. Ensuring unique and meaningful relationships. The backend code can be refined to ensure that relationships are unique and meaningful. This involves checking for duplicates and making sure that the relationships represent true semantic connections. Improved backend code example. Here's an improved version of your backend code to filter out isolated nodes and ensure unique, meaningful relationships. Python from Flask, import Flask, render template, request, JSONify. Import spacey, app equals Flask, core name, ni, NLP equals spacey dot lows at app dot route slash def index return render template index dot html. At app dot route slash process text, def process text text equals request dot form text, doc equals NLP text, entities equals text, end dot text, start end dot start char, end end dot end char, label end doc dot ends. Relationship source ent one dot text target n two dot text label related for ent one and doc dot ends for n two and doc dot ends if ent one dot text equals n two text tap ensure unique relationships unique relationships equals scene pairs equal to set for rel and relationships pair equals rel source rel target if pair not in scene pairs and pair one pair zero not in scene pairs unique relationships dot append rel scene pairs dot add pair. Filter out isolated entities. Connected entities equals rel source for rel in unique relationships. Union, rel target for rel in unique relationships. Filtered entities equals entity for entity in entities if entity text in connected entities data day equals oh, entities, filtered entities, relationships, unique relationships. Return JSONified data. If score name equals main app.run debug true. Ashok summarizing the big picture, the Knowledge Graph Generator web application dynamically processes and visualizes text data, converting it into a knowledge graph. The JavaScript code initializes the graph with an example text and updates it based on user input, ensuring a responsive and interactive experience. The D3.js library is used for visualization with features like dynamic text fitting and manual zoom control to enhance usability. The backend, powered by Flask and Spacey, extracts entities and relationships, filters out isolated nodes, and ensures meaningful connections. These improvements make the application more robust, user-friendly, and effective in visualizing relationships within text data. Speaking of connections, why did the graph go to therapy? Because it couldn't find a meaningful relationship. Hey, can you explain why we modifying the backend? If uh, everything should be working in JavaScript and the text modification should be updating the knowledge graph live in the browser. The reason for modifying the back end, despite the main functionality and updates occurring in the JavaScript front end, is to ensure data consistency, remove isolated nodes, and provide a robust structure for the knowledge graph. Here's a detailed explanation. Backend responsibilities. One, data processing consistency. The backend ensures that the text processing using Spacey is consistent and reliable. Spacey is a powerful NLP library that requires a Python environment, making the backend essential for handling text extraction and relationship formation. Two, filtering and validating data. The backend filters out isolated nodes and ensures that relationships between entities are meaningful. This pre-processing step is crucial to prevent sending redundant or irrelevant data to the front end, which improves the overall quality of the graph. Three, handling complex logic, certain logic, such as ensuring unique relationships and filtering entities, is more efficiently handled in Python using Spacey. This reduces the complexity on the client side and leverages the server's processing power. Front end responsibilities. One, dynamic updates and visualization. The front end, using JavaScript and D3.js, handles the dynamic updates and visualization of the knowledge graph. When the user modifies the text, the front end sends the updated text to the back end, receives the process data, and updates the graph in real time. Two, user interaction. The front end manages user interactions, such as panning, zooming, and dragging nodes. It ensures a smooth and responsive user experience by leveraging D3.js's powerful visualization capabilities. Integration of front-end and back-end. 
While the back end ensures data integrity and performs heavy text processing, the front end focuses on interactivity and visualization. This separation of concerns allows each part of the application to perform optimally. Here's why modifying the back end is still necessary. One, ensuring meaningful data. By processing the text and filtering data on the back end, we ensure that only meaningful and connected entities are sent to the front end. This avoids cluttered and confusing graphs, enhancing the clarity and usability of the visualization. Group two, efficiency and performance. Offloading complex text processing to the back end prevents the front end from becoming overloaded, especially with large text inputs. This keeps the application performant and responsive. Three, maintainability. Keeping the text processing logic in the back end makes the code more maintainable and scalable. Changes to the processing logic can be made in one place, the back end, without affecting the front end code. Example workflow. One, user input. The user types or modifies text in the text area on the front end. Two, back end processing. The modified text is sent to the back end, where Spacey processes it to extract entities and relationships, filters out isolated nodes, and ensures unique and meaningful connections. Three, front end visualization. The process data is sent back to the front end, where D3JS visualizes the knowledge graph, dynamically updating based on user input. By maintaining this division of responsibilities, the knowledge graph generator ensures high performance, accurate data processing, and a seamless user experience. Just like a well-structured graph, every part of the application has a defined role, ensuring everything is connected meaningfully. And remember, without a solid backend foundation, even the most interactive front end might end up feeling disconnected. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. The uh, uh, jokes uh, within the text uh, keep keep it up. Really like it. And now there's still a couple of things that I uh, don't quite understand. So what, what happens, for example, when we paste the new text into the box? Uh, is it being sent, sent to the server or not? Uh, also, can you confirm that the, is the Python code only being applied to the example text file sitting on the server before loaded onto the front panel? And then again, what is happening with text that is just being pasted into the text box on the front panel? Also, as can be seen from the image attached, I'm getting very messy uh, virus look like uh, structures when uh, pasting a very when using a very long text. Uh, can you explain why that might be happening? Yes, I literally don't know. So it's generated a new uh, JavaScript, I don't know why. Sure, let's break down the flow of the application, clarify the text processing steps, and address the issue with the visualization getting messy with long texts. Text processing flow, one, initial load. When the application first loads, the JavaScript fetches the content of example text.txt from the server and populates the text area with this content. This initial text is then processed and a knowledge graph is generated and displayed on the front end. Two, user input and text modification. As the user types or pastes new text into the text area, a debouncing function waits for the user to stop typing for a set interval, one second in this case. After the user stops typing, the text from the text area is sent to the server via a POST request to the slash process text endpoint. The server processes this text using Spacey to extract entities and relationships, filters out isolated nodes, and ensures unique and meaningful connections. The process data, entities, and relationships is sent back to the front end where it is visualized as a knowledge graph using D3.js. Confirming text handling. Example text. The example text file, example text.txt on the server is only used to populate the text area when the page first loads. After this, any changes to the text, typing or pasting new text are handled dynamically. Pasted text. When new text is pasted into the text box, it is sent to the server for processing in the same way as text that is typed. 
the process data is then used to update the graph in real time. Kinda. Addressing the messy graph issue. The issue with the graph becoming messy and appearing as a dense virus-like structure when processing long text is due to the large number of nodes and relationships being displayed. Here's why this might be happening and how it can be addressed. One, excessive number of entities. Long text can contain many entities, which can overwhelm the visualization and make it hard to decide. decipher. Two, high connectivity. If many entities are connected to each other, it can result in a densely packed graph with many overlapping links. Solutions. One, node clustering. Group related nodes into clusters to reduce the visual complexity. Two, Adjusting link distance and charge, modify the D3JS force simulation parameters to increase the distance between nodes and reduce the charge, repulsion, to spread the nodes out more. Three, filtering relationships. Implement additional logic to filter out less significant relationships to reduce the number of links in the graph. Example of adjusted JavaScript for visualization. Here's an improved version of the visualize graph function that includes adjustments to handle long text. I don't know, it seemed to know what is it doing. Currently have 155 lines of code. Uh, why this is much? Uh, where is the graph? There are no errors. Okay, that code doesn't work. That's probably a good idea is to uh, test it just to a few words and that's interesting it used to work it works when we keep uh, uh, removing stuff the other thing is oops yeah, why are you doing that kind of stuff? I don't know. Still not convinced the way the whole application is uh, structured. Okay, updating the JavaScript uh, from before the code that you generated did not work. So we back to what we had before, see below. Hey, can we also from the image attached uh, make sure if we do still have individual nodes, even though we tried to get rid of them, uh, can they be visible within the canvas? So don't put them way too far from the center of the canvas and again we still have repeated nodes we still have nodes that are not connected to anything else uh, how do we fix the code also give a bigger picture and go for jokes within the text if there is anything uh, relevant you can come up with. We would like to reduce a uh, complexity and uh, improve uh, visualization, but also make sure the node connections are meaningful. Also, another question, a side question, can you make sure uh, to confirm if the nodes is only capitalized text also can you go over the structure of this uh, web application the overall structure of it and again confirm with a yes or no if the text when changed on the front panel is being sent to the back end Yes or no? Overview of the web application structure, project structure. One, backend Flask app main, main Flask application file. Handles routes for rendering the HTML template and processing text input using Spacey. Template slash contains the HTML template index.html for the web application. 
static, contains static files such as JavaScript, script.js, CSS, styles.css, and example text, example text.txt. Front end, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, HTML. Yeah, the reading out loud is failing on this site. That's not good, is it? Still generating. I kept uh, asking uh, for generating the text first and all the code uh, later so we can actually use a uh, text to speech properly. We're having trouble with that. Uh, in full paragraph text, uh, can you explain what changes to the code were made? and how it meant to help the current working of our web application uh, give a bigger picture. In this knowledge graph generator web application, we have made several important changes to both the backend and frontend code to improve its functionality and user experience. Filter entities and relationships, we modified the backend code to ensure that only unique and meaningful relationships are included. The backend now processes the text using Spacey to extract entities and relationships, filters out isolated nodes, entities not connected to any other entity, and ensures unique relationships. This prevents the visualization from becoming cluttered with duplicate or irrelevant nodes. Ensuring connectivity, the backend now filters out entities that are not part of any relationship. This helps in avoiding isolated nodes in the graph ensuring that every node displayed has a meaningful connection to at least one other node. This filtering happens before sending the data back to the front end. Changes to the front end code, dynamic updates and visualization. The JavaScript code dynamically updates the knowledge graph based on user input. When the user types or pastes new text into the text area, the text is sent to the back end for processing. The process data, entities, and relationships is then visualized using d3.js. We adjusted the d3.js for simulation parameters to ensure that nodes stay within the visible canvas area and that the graph remains clear and readable. Adjusting node visibility and text fitting. We improved the font size calculation for node labels to ensure the text fits well within the nodes, making the graph more readable. The simulation parameters were also adjusted to reduce the distance between nodes and ensure that nodes do not stray too far from the center of the canvas. Big picture. The Knowledge Graph Generator web application processes text data to create interactive visual knowledge graphs. Initially, an example text is loaded from the server and displayed in the text area. As the user modifies the text, the new text is sent to the backend for processing. The backend extracts entities and relationships, filters out irrelevant data, and sends the processed information back to the front end. The front end then uses d3.js to dynamically update the knowledge graph, ensuring a clear and interactive visualization. These changes make the application more robust, ensuring that the knowledge graph is both meaningful and easy to navigate. The back end focuses on data integrity and processing, while the front end ensures a responsive and interactive user experience. This separation of concerns allows the application to perform efficiently, providing users with valuable insights through a well-structured and visually appealing knowledge graph. Explanation of the code changes. Backend code. One, filtering unique relationships. The backend code now ensures that relationships between entities are unique, preventing duplicate connections. Two, isolated nodes removal. The backend filters out isolated nodes, ensuring that every entity in the graph is connected to at least one other entity. Front-end code. One, dynamic updates. The front-end code listens for changes in the text area and sends the updated text to the back-end for processing. Two, visualization adjustments. The d3.js visualization parameters were adjusted to improve readability and ensure that nodes do not stray too far from the center of the canvas. By making these changes, the Knowledge Graph Generator web application becomes more user-friendly, providing clear and meaningful visualizations of text data. And remember, when it comes to graphs, it's all about making those connections count, just like in real life. Yeah, I love your comment on uh, the last comment comes to graphs. <laughs> it's all about making those connections count, <laughs> just like in real life. Yeah, that's that's very profound. Uh, however, we would like to get 
uh, back to the implementation of it let's see if we can spot anything unusual in the image provided i'll give you a hint it's to do with the repeated not connected to anything nodes can you also explain again in simpler terms how does the application communicate so when we change the text on the front uh, end when the user changes the text does it go to the server yes or no if the processing is made in the back end are we only processing what's in the example text file or also um, if uh, any text was pasted copy pasted into or written into the text box on the front page and you confirm a general term long sentences would be good no dot points and uh, keep up the jokes embedded within the text keep repeating generating all the text first before you start coding these instructions seem to be continuously ignored don't like it but i mean if the code works then you will be excused the knowledge graph generator web application is designed to transform text data into visual knowledge graphs it extracts entities and relationships to create a dynamic and interactive visualization the front end uses javascript to handle user interactions and updates the graph in real time while the back end powered by flask and spacey processes the text data let's break down the functionality and recent improvements keeping our explanation clear and straightforward Commun yeah, I don't know it's, if it's when uh, clicking on it, the text-to-speech just failed, but... Uh, uh, like, yeah, so the answer is directly in bold letters. Yes, whenever the user ch changes the text on the front end, it is sent to the server. Okay, that's uh, actually not how I was envisioning the application, but... Uh, um, but if it's working, it's working. The backend has been enhanced to ensure that the only unique and meaningful relationships are included. Isolated nodes, not, not, those not connected to, the, to any other nodes are filtered out. That's what we continuously ask for. So hopefully it actually works. This helps to prevent the crops from becoming cluttered. That's right. So that's a backend. The front JavaScript have been modified dynamically to dynamically update the visualization based on the process data received from the backend. Uh, so we're using D3.js for simulation parameters were adjusted to ensure nodes remain within the visible canvas area and the graph stays clear and readable. Sounds too good to be true. Is this the whole code though? We have 138 lines of code. Okay, 137. So that's at least it didn't get rid of too much stuff. Yeah, don't get it. I don't get it. Uh, this seemed to be only marginally better. I <laughs> just leave it at that. To prove the knowledge graph generator web application and resolve the issues, uh, we repeated and disconnected nodes. Let's improve the detailed explanation first. Uh, okay, the knowledge graph generator web application converts text data into visual knowledge graph. That's great. Extract, extracting entities and relationships to create an interactive visualization. Okay, so that's kind of works. Even though there's a few repeated things and things. So let's see if it actually addressed it or not. The front-end reader in JavaScript handles uh, use uh, input and updates the graph real-time while back-end implementing using Flask uh, and sp Spicy. I don't know how to pronounce it. Spicy. To process the text data, some sort of NLP um, a Python library. It doesn't do a very great job. 
when the user modifies the text, the input box the text is sent to the server for processing. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. That's not what we asked for. Okay, can you actually explain how the spicy library uh, works? Uh, also, originally we were kind of asking for the text for as much as possible to be executed and implemented in JavaScript without uh, sending data to the server back and forth because we're actually trying to save electricity. By the way, if you have any funny comments on this, go for it. Um, when user modifies the text, the input box, the text is sent to the server. Yeah, so I'm not sure. Um, actually, <laughs> I've already asked like 100 times, but I actually want to confirm if this is correct because uh, this is not how we uh, designed originally. Uh, we don't want to change anything major at this stage because we actually want to publish the, this application today on our website. Yes, yeah, so extracting entities and relationships ensuring unique connections uh, sounds great can we actually explain how that works and if uh, we want to make sure we're actually using that uh, language uh, processing uh, library correctly yeah i want to filter filter out isolated nodes that seem to be still a problem the uh, individual single nodes are still there there is still some uh, repetitions in the nodes so some nodes are still uh, repeated being the same the front end then visualizes the process data using a d3.js that's fine don't think there's any problems with that yeah we do want to make sure the nodes uh, remain within the visible area of the graph and yes it's absolutely important that the graph is clear and readable uh, so we don't want any of uh, overlaps of the nodes uh, which is which is okay at the moment so that's working fine and uh, so i'm not sure just so we don't get a timeout with the smarter ai robot should we just pop the uh, improvements instructions some sort of instructions into github copilot and you will keep giving us the bigger picture stuff uh, without doing the coding yourself how does that sound yeah we'll pop this in but uh, those Backend improvements. Let's see if we can actually use a uh, copilot for that. Copilot with a uh, workspace and I'll ensure entities are unique. Let's do actually all of those at once just because we can. Yeah, that's what we have at the moment. What does this see? some things are still repeated like flask appears four times why keeps expanding like the universe or something when you <laughs> when you <laughs> move stuff <laughs> i'm trying to uh, bring them back together and I keep uh, you have javascript like so many times i think it's to do with the fact that we have titles in the text no i don't think so don't like it don't like it keep generating code i understand the need to primarily rely on javascript for processing text data on the client side to save server resources and electricity here i'll provide an overview of how spacey works and explain how we can modify the application to perform text processing in JavaScript while still achieving the same goals. How Spacey works. Spacey is an open source library for advanced natural language processing, NLP, in Python. It provides pre-trained models and various functionalities to process. Oh, come on. 
The other thing is that you can't really uh, read, uh, continue reading from the same point, so you can't pause it. It's like, yeah, bad, bad, bad robot. Do we have another, like, other uh, text to speech, but they're no anywhere near as good as uh, this one. So that's a bit unfortunate. Yeah, if you. I don't know why it's just giving me the same. Uh, what? Compromise. Compromise? <laughs> what? What's that? Uh, let's actually ask uh, Perplexity because it's actually connected to the web and everything. Uh, I'm not paying for this, but uh, it's to un unpackage this version of the Compromise Library. The Compromise Library, Natural Language Processing, NLP Library for JavaScript that provides various text uh, analysis capabilities. Okay, that's actually uh, interesting. The, uh, there's a JavaScript there that actually works. Uh, is it working? Right. Okay. Well, yeah. So currently, uh, can you give a summary of the new code? And uh, also primarily focus on how is it gonna improve our knowledge graph. Um, currently, so before we had uh, what you can find in the attached image, how is it gonna change with the new code? Uh, summary of the new code and improve overview of new code. The new implementation of the Knowledge Graph Generator web application shifts the text processing from the server side to the client side, primarily using the compromise library for basic NLP tasks. This approach reduces server load, saves electricity, and provides a more responsive user experience. How it works. One, client side text processing. Compromise library. The text processing is done using the... Yeah, that's pretty annoying. I think we need to um, restart the page or something. Let's try again, see if it helps. Summary of the new code and improvements. Overview of new code. The new implementation of the Knowledge Graph Generator web application shifts the text processing from the server side to the client side, primarily using the compromise library for basic NLP tasks. This approach reduces server load, saves electricity, and provides a more responsive user experience. How it works. One. Client-side text processing. Compromise library. The text processing is done using the compromise library in JavaScript, which extracts entities such as people, organizations, and places from the text. Entity and relationship extraction. Entities are identified and relationships between them are inferred based on their proximity within the text. Two, unique relationships and filtering. Unique relationships. The code ensures that only unique relationships are considered to avoid duplicates. Uh, filtering isolated nodes. Nodes that do not have any connections are filtered out, ensuring a more coherent and meaningful graph. 3. Visualization with D3JS. Graph visualization. The D3JS library is used to visualize the processed entities and relationships. Adjustments to the force simulation parameters ensure that nodes remain within the visible area and do not overlap excessively. Improvements over previous implementation. One, reduced server load. By shifting the text processing to the client side, we eliminate the need for constant server requests. This reduces the load on the server, which is especially beneficial for high traffic scenarios and contributes to energy savings. Two, enhanced responsiveness. The application becomes more responsive as the text processing and graph updates occur directly in the user's browser without the latency involved in server communication. This provides a smoother user experience. Three, cleaner and more meaningful graphs. The new implementation ensures that the graph is cleaner by removing isolated nodes and avoiding duplicate relationships. This results in a more meaningful and interpretable knowledge graph. Four, scalability. Handling the processing on the client side makes the application more scalable. 
As more users access the application, the server's performance won't degrade since each user's browser handles its own processing. How the new code improves the current knowledge graph. In the attached image, the graph shows several repeated and isolated nodes which clutter the visualization and make it harder to interpret. The new code addresses these issues by ensuring that only unique and connected entities are displayed. This results in a more streamlined and clear graph. Additionally, the use of D3.js for visualization with adjusted parameters ensures that the nodes are appropriately spaced and remain within the visible area, further enhancing readability. Key benefits. Efficiency, reduced server load and energy consumption. Responsiveness, faster updates and better user experience. Clarity, cleaner graphs with fewer isolated or duplicate nodes. Scalability, better handling of multiple users without server performance issues. Example of the new code implementation. HTML setup, HTML doctml langle head, title knowledge graph generator link rel style sheet ref styles.styles.cat head. Body H1 knowledge. Right, so does it mean we got rid of all the backend processing? Does it mean we're doing everything in JavaScript? First, if you could give a bigger picture as well, that would be great. Also, why do you keep regenerating the code? Is, was anything actually changed or is it just for reference uh, purposes? When you do regenerate the code, can you put comments within the code of, tell, of uh, indicating what exactly was changed? But for now, just uh, stick to the bigger picture. Don't generate any new code. We haven't tested this one yet. Uh, we'll get into trouble. There's a major change. If this doesn't work, it will be, it will be not fun. But I do like the idea of nothing happening in the back end so we might just uh, go with it I don't know why we have the HTML again I have 19 lines that's 22 I assume it's only because we are calling uh, script.js example text and the styling why are we changing the JavaScript again? We currently have 143 lines of code. Now we have 144. So it's, a, I assume, a minor change. Let's go for the bigger picture stuff. Big picture. Client-side processing with JavaScript. Overview. The goal of the updated knowledge graph generator is to handle all text processing on the client side using JavaScript, thereby eliminating the need for server-side text processing. This approach enhances efficiency, reduces server load, and conserves electricity by leveraging the user's browser for computation. Key changes. One, client-side text processing, library used. The compromise library is used for natural language processing tasks such as entity extraction directly within the browser. Advantages. This reduces the need for server interactions, making the application more responsive and efficient. Two, entity and relationship extraction. Entities. The JavaScript code extracts entities, e.g. people, organizations, places, from the input text. Relationships. It then infers relationships between these entities based on their proximity within the text. 3. Filtering and ensuring unique connections, unique relationships, ensures that relationships between entities are unique to avoid cluttering the graph. Connected entities. Filters out isolated nodes, entities without any connections, to maintain a clean and meaningful graph. 4. Visualization with D3.js Graph Visualization Uses D3.js to visualize entities and relationships as a knowledge graph. Node and Link Adjustments Adjusts the four simulation parameters to ensure nodes remain within the visible area and do not overlap excessively. How it works 1. Initial text load The application initially fetches the example text file, example text.txt from the server when the page loads. This is the only interaction with the backend. The fetched text is then processed directly in the browser using JavaScript. 2. Dynamic text processing. As the user types or modifies the text hex in the input box, the text is dynamically processed using the compromise library. 
Entities are extracted and relationships are inferred on the fly without any need for server-side processing. Three graph updates. The process data, entities and relationships is visualized using D3JS. The graph is updated dynamically to reflect changes in the input text, ensuring a real-time interactive experience. Benefits. One, efficiency and performance. Reduces server load by offloading text processing to the client side. Enhances responsiveness by minimizing latency associated with server requests. Two, scalability. The application scales better with more users since each user's browser handles its own processing. Three, energy conservation. Saves electricity by reducing the computational burden on the server, aligning with green computing practices. How to proceed. One, test the current implementation. Ensure the current JavaScript code correctly processes text, extracts entities and relationships, and updates the knowledge graph. Validate that no server-side processing is required beyond the initial text load. Two. Uh, we have a very long text, but only three nodes are being generated. Uh, not sure what's that all about. Uh, is there something specific in the code that limits the number of nodes? Uh, Give us a bigger picture. Include jokes within the text if there is anything relevant. Explanation of the issue and big picture. The issue you're experiencing with only a few nodes being generated from a long text could be due to how entities are being extracted and processed by the compromise library. Let's dive into the possible reasons and the bigger picture of how this application works. Possible reasons for limited nodes. One, entity recognition limitations. The compromise library might not be recognizing many entities from the text. Unlike more sophisticated NLP libraries like Spacey, Compromise has limited support for complex named entity recognition, NER. Two, filtering mechanism. The filtering mechanism in the code might be too aggressive, removing entities that should be included. This could be due to how unique relationships and connected entities are being determined. Three, proximity-based relationships. Uh, the method of inferring relationships based on the proximity of entities in the text might not be capturing all relevant connections, leading to fewer nodes and relationships. Big picture of how the application works. The knowledge graph generator aims to convert text data into a visual representation of entities and their relationships using client-side processing with JavaScript. Here's a high-level overview of how it works. One, client-side text processing. Library the compromise library is used for basic NLP tasks. Functionality, it processes the input text to extract entities like people, organizations, and places. Two, entity and relationship extraction. Entities, extracted entities are collected into an array. Relationships, relationships are inferred based on the proximity of entities in the text. Three, filtering and ensuring unique connections. Unique relationships, ensures relationships are unique to avoid duplication. Filtering, filters out isolated nodes to maintain a coherent graph. Four, graph visualization with D3JS, Graph uses D3JS to visualize entities and relationships. Adjustments adjusts parameters to keep nodes within the visible area and avoid overlap. Stashed example code to highlight areas of improvement. There are some areas in the JavaScript code where you might need to check or improve to ensure more entities and relationships are captured and displayed. Entity extraction and relationship inference. JavaScript function process text text. Slash use compromise to process text const doc equals NLP text. Const entities equals doc dot people to out array concat doc dot organizations doc dot places out array. Infer relationships example based on proximity in text const relationships equals equals four four let i equals zero i entities dot length plus plus four let j equal plus one j entities dot length j plus plus relationships dot push source entities i target entities j label related to. Sir, ensure unique relationships, const unique relationships, array dot from, new set relationships, map JSON stringify, map JSON dot parse. Filter isolated nodes, const connected entities equals new set unique relationships dot flat map, rel equals rel dot sort target, const filtered entities equals entities dot filter, entity, connected entities dot has entity, visualize graph, entities, filtered entities dot map, text, relationships, unique relationships. Funny comment on electricity. Remember, we're saving electricity by offloading the processing to the client's browser. So in a way, your computer is getting a little workout every time you process a new text. 
It's like a tiny, eco-friendly gym session for your CPU. Conclusion. To address the issue of only a few nodes being generated from a long text, consider the following. Verify entity extraction. Ensure that compromise is correctly recognizing and extracting entities from the text. Adjust filtering logic. Review the logic for filtering isolated nodes and unique relationships to ensure it's not too aggressive. Improve relationship inference. Enhance how relationships are inferred to capture more relevant connections. Test these changes to see if they improve the number and relevance of nodes in your knowledge graph. By refining these aspects, you should achieve a more detailed and meaningful visualization. Okay, a couple of issues. By the way, we're only talking to a robot because we don't have a human available. If you want to make jokes on this, uh, go for it. Uh, but there are a couple of things from the trying to improve the how the knowledge graph is uh, being visualized and uh, and how the text is being processed so on and so forth. Uh, if you could give uh, a bit more simplified, bigger picture on this, that would be great. Now, from the images, can you suggest some improvements? Uh, first, we still see individual nodes uh, they are not being filtered out for whatever reason uh, they are still uh, repetitions in the text in the so some nodes are potentially being repeated so we, uh, i can't see anything specifically now but we want to make sure it does not happen with any uh, additional text uh, could you explain how the JavaScript library works? Uh, what parameters can be used to improve the text processing? Uh, also, can we make sure the text uh, fits in to the circle of the node and doesn't go uh, over? Also, it seems like from the current example, uh, everything is connected to everything. So it's uh, hard to make uh, sense of the knowledge graph. Uh, can we improve on that somehow? Simplified big picture. The goal of the knowledge graph generator web application is to transform text data into a visual knowledge graph extracting entities and relationships to create an interactive and insightful visualization. By processing the text data on the client side using JavaScript, we aim to reduce server load and enhance the user experience with real-time updates. Issues identified and suggested improvements. One, individual nodes not filtered out. Issue. Sure, why the reading out loud just keeps uh, breaking, not working. Do we have any? Yeah, we have a lot of uh, errors. I don't think this error is to do with my browser. I think it's to do with uh, uh, OpenAI stuff. Now, we would not be troubleshooting their website. We have our own website to take care of. We have an improvement of the JavaScript and visualized data. Uh, we are missing that function. Implement logic to determine if two entities should be connected. This could be based on proximity context or specific rules. Okay, we finally... Okay, seems like we finally filtered out the individual single nodes that are not connected to anything. But we would like to still improve our stuff. So first of all, when the page is loading, we would like the nodes to fit into the canvas uh, better. Any suggestions on that? Also, the text still currently extends beyond the borders of uh, the node circle in some uh, places can we make sure that doesn't happen uh, again give overall picture a full sentence text full paragraphs 
and uh, any jokes are welcome within the text. Also explain the images. Yeah, we're definitely having everything. We are definitely still having everything connected to everything type of situation. So how do we actually address that? The last code didn't actually fix much. Uh, we might want to regenerate some stuff, making sure it's all uh, working together. Okay, let's go over this quickly. So yeah, the bigger picture is that we're making this uh, knowledge graph generator meaningful visualization, blah, 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 blah. Um, yeah, we have currently an issue of uh, everything being connected to everything. We obviously want to avoid that. We want to avoid text overflow in nodes, so on and so forth. So hopefully yeah, that should connect. If, oops, actually going back to the previous version of the visualization function. We had the number function to avoid connecting every entity to every entity we can establish connection based on the context proximity in the text or specific rules okay example of logic term if two entities should be connected this could be based on proxy example threshold for proximity okay obviously we want to do something okay, so obviously we want to with the relationship logic uh, we want connecting entities primarily based on context um, and less on proximity that can be updated that would be great uh, also if you have any jokes on the topic please include them in the response Again, we also have the font adjustment. Let's see if it actually. I don't think this was actually changed. Improve initial uh, node layout, initial zoom layout position. Do we already have code like this? No. We have SVG call, yes. So I assume all this goes away. We replace it with this code. Okay, we can actually continue generating this complete impl implementation. Right, so it's actually generated the whole thing. Let's try see. Uh, yeah, we were not able to <laughs> implement it ourselves so maybe we should yes something is not right with the responses oh wait a second i was looking at the wrong yeah, we it's regenerating the whole javascript code still haven't finished and we currently have like 170 lines of code and only a uh, two nodes uh, remained still a uh, make sure text a uh, uh, no text doesn't go off the node circle make sure the text is not too big or too small uh, spread the text on multiple lines if uh, needed uh, improve the visualization of the graph add uh, the loading spinner no we don't need the loading spinner add uh, to few entities are being extracted or maybe uh, are being shown uh, try to show more show more entities there are no errors uh, make your the nodes fit within the visible when loading 
Ah, so we get a bunch uh, more uh, prompts just because it's a never ending exercise, isn't it? Shash addressing overly connected graphs and enhancing visualization. The knowledge graph generator is designed to transform textual data into a dynamic visual knowledge graph. This graph highlights entities and their relationships, providing an interactive visualization that enhances understanding of the data. The current implementation faces several challenges, such as overly connected nodes, text overflow in nodes, and suboptimal initial layout. By refining relationship logic, adjusting text fitting, and improving the initial graph layout, we aim to enhance the readability and usability of the graph. Current issues and suggested improvements. One, overly connected graph. The current logic connects every entity to every other entity, resulting in a cluttered graph. Two, text overflow in nodes. Text within nodes extends beyond the circle boundaries, impacting readability. Three, initial graph layout. Nodes do not fit well within the canvas on initial load, leading to a skewed graph. Suggested improvements. One, refining relationship logic. Implement a method to determine meaningful connections between entities based on proximity or context. Two, adjusting text to fit nodes. Ensure text within nodes is dynamically adjusted to fit within the circle boundaries without overflowing. Three, improving initial node layout. Adjust the initial zoom and positioning to ensure nodes are well distributed within the canvas. Detailed implement. JavaScript improvements. One, refining relationship logic. To avoid connecting every entity to every other entity, we can establish connections based on proximity or specific rules. JavaScript functions should connect entity one, entity two, text. Const distance threshold equals 50. Example threshold for proximity const index one equals text.index of entity one. Const index two equals text.index of entity two. Return math.abs index one is index two distance threshold. Two, ensuring text fits in node circles. Adjust the font size dynamically to ensure the text fits within the node circles. If the text is too long, truncate it with an ellipsis. JavaScript node.append text.atdy35em.adder text anchor middle dot adder fill tash 0000.adder fives function d const base radius equals 30 const text length equals d.text.length const scaling factor equals 2 const max font size equals 14 const min font size equals 8 let font size equals base radius scaling factor slash text length Font size equals math min font size max font size. Font size equals math max font size min font size. Return font size px. Dot atter font family Arial sans serif. Text d. Const words equals d dot text dot split. Return words dot slice zero two. Join. Three. Improving initial node layout. Set an appropriate initial zoom level and position to ensure the graph fits well within the canvas. JavaScript initial zoom to fit all nodes within the canvas. Const bounds equals zoom layer dot node. Get bbox. Const full width equals bounds dot width. Const full height equals bounds dot height. Const mid x equals bounds dot x plus full width two. Const mid y equals bounds dot y is full height two. Const initial scale. Yeah, yeah we want to make sure connections are only made between entities that are close in context. Uh, so, uh, can we use? I have a feeling I will get timed out from uh, the bigger robot, the GPT-4. I never get timed out from uh, GitHub Copilot. Um, function includes basic uh, improvements to check if ent entities appear in the same sentence. This is a simple heuristic approach. Yes, but that collections are only made between entities by a con considering the context I don't get it yeah github copilot is not great uh we have to go back to for not uh, gpt just because before it times us out or something it's still doing distance it that it can't get it right enhancing the knowledge graph visualization big picture overview the goal of the knowledge graph generator is to transform text data into a dynamic and interactive visual representation of entities and their relationships by leveraging javascript and the d3.js library this web application processes the text extracts entities 
and determines meaningful connections to visualize a comprehensible knowledge graph. The main challenges being addressed include overly connected nodes, text overflow within nodes, and ensuring a well-distributed initial graph layout. The latest changes focus on refining the relationship logic, ensuring text fits within nodes, and improving the initial layout to enhance readability and usability. Key issues and improvements. One overly connected graph. Previously, the logic connected every entity to every other entity, resulting in a cluttered graph. Two, text overflow in nodes. Text within nodes extended beyond the circle boundaries, impacting readability. Three, initial graph layout. Nodes were not well distributed within the canvas on initial load. Implementing meaningful connections. To avoid connecting every entity to every other entity, the should connect function determines meaningful connections based on the proximity of the entities within the text. JavaScript function should connect entity one, entity two, text. Const distance threshold equals 1000. Example threshold for proximity. Const index one, text.index of entity one, Const index 2, text index of entity 2, return math.abs index 1's index 2 distance threshold. Shaf, ensuring text fits within node circles. Adjust the font size dynamically to ensure the text fits within the node circles. If the text is too long, truncate it appropriately. JavaScript node.append text.adder dy at 35 em.at text anchor middle.adder fill 0000. zero, zero, zero. Dot adder font size function d const base radius equals 30 const text length equals d dot text dot length const scaling factor equal 2 const max font size equals 14 const min font size equal 8 let font size equals base radius or scaling factor text length font size equals math min font size max font size font size equals math dot max font size min font size return dot font size px dot atcher font family arial sans serif but text d equals lapi const words equal d dot text dot split return words dot slice zero two join tash dash fry improving initial node layout adjust the initial zoom level and position to ensure the graph fits well within the canvas JavaScript slash initial zoom to fit all nodes within the canvas. Const bounds equals zoom layer dot node get b box. Const full width equals bounds dot width. Const full height bounds dot height. Const mid x equals bounds dot x plus full width two. Const mid y equals bounds dot y plus full height slash two. Const initial scale equal 0.8 slash math dot max full width svg width full height ski height. Const initial translate equals svg width two dice initial scale mid x svg height two initial scale mid y. SVG.call zoom.transform d3.zoom identity.translate initial translate scale code implementation. Here's the complete implementation with the discussed improvements. JavaScript document add event listener DOM content loaded quin const text input at document get element by id text input text input dot add event listener key up handle typing fetch example text URL then response equal response dot text then data equals text input value equals data process text data. Let typing timer, const done typing interval equals 1000, function handle typing, clear timeout, typing timer, if this dot value, typing timer equals set timeout equal process text, this dot value, done typing interval. Function process text text, const doc equals NLP text, const entities equals new set doc dot people out array, concat doc dot organizations out array, doc dot places out array. Const relationships for let i equals zero i entities dot length i plus for let j equals well, i've one j plus one j entities dot length j plus plus if should connect entities i entities j text relationships dot source entities i target entities j label related to const unique relationships equals array new set relationships dot map json stringify map json dot parse const connected entities equals new set unique relationships dot flat, flat map rel equals rel dot source rel dot target Const filtered entities equal entities dot filter entity equals connected entities dot has entity. Visualize graph entities filtered entities dot map tap text text relationships unique relationships. Function should connect entity one entity two text const distance threshold equal one thousand. Const index one equals text dot index of entity one. Const index two text index of entity two. Return math dot apes index one index two distance threshold. Function visualize graph data const container equals document get element by id graph container container dot inner html equals const svg width container dot client width svg height equals container client height const svg equals data select container append svg dot adder width svg width dot adder height svg height const zoom layer equals svg append g const simulation equals d3 force simulation data dot entities dot force link uh, d3 dot force link dot relationships 
ID D.txt, distance 150, .forge D3, .force many body, strength 9 of 300, .force center, D3, .force center, SVG width 2, SV tick ticked, const link equals zoom layer, dot select all, link, data, dot relationships, dot enter, append line, dot atter class, link, dot style stroke, fata, stroke dash width 2. Const node equals zoom layer, select all, dot it's really out of whack. It was just generating the same thing over and over again. They get a timeout for... Hey, no. Yeah, what's going on? Still have... Don't like that foster innovation thing. Everything's connected to everything. Well, that's because we are still only doing proximity. Sure, here's the continuous text with embedded jokes while keeping the content relevant. The 3D Brain MRI Viewer is a groundbreaking tool that allows users to explore the brain's anatomy interactively. Imagine a brain so open to exploration, it makes you feel like a neuron on vacation. Using MRI data, this application generates 3D models that can be rotated, zoomed, and panned. Users can view various brain structures, such as the cerebrum, cerebellum, brainstem, and ventricles in different orientations, axial, sagittal, coronal. It's like taking a guided tour through your thoughts, minus the awkward tour guide who keeps talking about his... MRI, magnetic resonance imaging, is a non-invasive imaging technology that produces three-dimensional detailed anatomical images. It's often used for disease detection, diagnosis, and treatment monitoring. Kind of like how your mom uses Facebook to monitor your life, but with fewer embarrassing photos. This application uses 3.js, a powerful 3D library that makes WebGL easier to use for rendering the MRI data as interactive 3D models. To interact with this marvel of modern technology, users can navigate through 2D slices using arrow keys and page up, page down. If only flipping through textbooks in med school was this easy. For 3D models, users can rotate by clicking and dragging the mouse, zoom with the scroll wheel, and pan by right-clicking and dragging. It's like playing a video game, except the high score is an A in neuroanatomy. The backend is built using Flask and serves HTML template data from nifty files. The frontend uses HTML, CSS for layout and styling, and JavaScript with 3.js for handling the 3D model interactions and 2D slice displays. MRI slices are extracted from a nifty file and served dynamically. This setup is so seamless, even your tech-averse aunt could figure it out. Well, maybe not, but we can dream. The 3D visualization setup initializes a scene, camera, and WebGL renderer. The camera is set up with a perspective view and the renderer's background color is set to black for visibility, much like how black coffee is essential for visibility in early morning meetings. Orbit controls are used to allow the user to rotate and zoom the view. Ambient and directional lights are added to illuminate the objects, ensuring that your virtual brain tour doesn't feel like exploring a haunted house. Volumetric data is fetched from a server endpoint, processed into a point cloud representation, and then visualized in the 3D scene. The positions and colors of these points are stored in arrays used to create buffer attributes for a three-tot buffer geometry object. This is a lot like arranging M&Ms by color before eating them. Meticulous and rewarding. For 2D slice visualization, canvas elements display axial, sagittal, and coronal slices of the data. Functions are defined to fetch and display these slices from the server based on orientation and index, and keyboard and mouse event listeners are implemented for navigation. It's like flipping through a comic book where every page is a slice of your brain, Talk about graphic content. Additionally, a 3D model of a skull is loaded from a GLTF file, scaled and positioned to align with the volumetric data. A function is provided to toggle the visibility of this skull mesh, adding an element of surprise to your brain exploration. It's like a game of peekaboo with your skeleton. Finally, the animation loop ensures a smooth interactive 3D visualization by updating controls and rendering each frame using request animation frame. If only we could animate our daily tasks with such efficiency. This setup is comprehensive, providing additional features like loading external models and enabling user interaction through keyboard and mouse events, making brain exploration as easy as, well, using your brain. Hope you enjoyed the tour.
The 3D Brain MRI Viewer is an innovative application that allows users to explore the brain's anatomy interactively. Imagine a brain that's more open to exploration than your average mystery novel. Using MRI data, this application generates 3D models that can be rotated, zoomed, and panned. Users can view various brain structures, such as the cerebrum, cerebellum, brainstem, and ventricles in different orientations, axial, sagittal, coronal. It's like giving your curiosity a virtual roadmap through your noggin. MRI, Magnetic Resonance Imaging, is a non-invasive imaging technology that produces three-dimensional detailed anatomical images. It's often used for disease detection, diagnosis, and treatment monitoring. Just like how your dog detects the crinkling of a treat bag from three rooms away, MRI helps in detecting the slightest anomalies in the body. This application uses 3JS, a powerful 3D library that makes WebGL easier to use for rendering the MRI data as interactive 3D models. Think of it as a techie's version of a coloring book, minus the crayons and plus some serious cool factor. To navigate this application, users can use the arrow keys to navigate through 2D slices. Up and down arrows navigate axial slices, while left and right arrows take you through sagittal slices. Page up and page down keys navigate coronal slices. If only our morning routines were this well organized. Users can also use the mouse wheel to scroll through slices within each canvas, making it as intuitive as scrolling through your favorite meme feed. Interacting with the 3D model is just as user-friendly. Users can rotate the model by clicking and dragging the mouse, zoom in with the mouse wheel, and pan the view by clicking and dragging with the right mouse button. It's like playing a video game where the final boss is an anatomy quiz. The back end of this application uses Flask and serves the HTML template and MRI data from Nifty files. Meanwhile, the front end relies on HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with 3JS to handle interactions and visualization. MRI slices are extracted from Nifty files and served dynamically, making the setup so seamless that even your technophobe uncle could figure it out. Well, maybe with some guidance. The code snippet in the image shows how Flask is used to serve different types of data, including HTML templates and JSON files based on the URL requested. The script starts by importing necessary modules and creating an instance of the Flask class. If only setting up your IKEA furniture were this straightforward. Forward. Serving the index page is done through the at app.route slash decorator, which links the function index to the root URL. This function renders the index.html template, essentially opening the door to the web application. If only opening the doors of opportunity in real life were as easy as hitting enter. For serving image slices, the route slash slice slash orientations int index fetches slices based on orientation, axial, sagittal, or coronal, and index. It checks if the orientation is valid and if the slice file exists, then serves the image using send file. If anything goes wrong, it returns a JSON error message. Think of it as a bouncer checking your ID at the club entrance, um, but uh, less intimidating. Serving volumetric data is handled by the rota uh, slash volumetric, which serves a JSON file containing the data. The function checks for file existence and serves it with the correct MIME type. If the file isn't found, it returns an error message, much like how your GPS freaks out when you take an unexpected detour. The slash sample route serves a sample JSON file using a similar pattern, ensuring that all data points are covered. The function checks for the file, attempts to serve it, and handles any errors gracefully. It's like having a backup plan for your backup plan. Finally, the script includes a conditional statement that runs the app if the script is executed directly, if name equals main scored. The app runs in debug mode, allowing for automatic reloading on code changes and detailed error messages. Think of it as having a personal assistant who's always ready to adapt and debug your day. Wouldn't that be nice? Hope you enjoyed the tour. Okay, we don't currently have the scale model. Any suggestions? Can you avoid dot points and also explain why the volumetric data looks the way it does. Um, seems like it can be improved quite a bit, the way the data is being rendered. Certainly. Here's a continuous text format that explains the current setup and potential improvements, including an analysis of the volumetric data rendering. 3D Brain MRI Viewer is an advanced application designed to allow users to explore the brain's anatomy interactively. 
This application leverages MRI data to generate detailed 3D models that can be rotated, zoomed, and panned. Users can examine various brain structures such as the cerebrum, cerebellum, brainstem, and ventricles in different orientations, axial, sagittal, and coronal. It's like giving your curiosity a guided tour through the intricacies of your brain. MRI, mag magnetic res resonant imaging, is, an, is a non-invasive imaging technology that provides three-dimensional anatomical images widely used for disease detection, diagnosis, and treatment monitoring, much like a detective meticulously solving a case. This application employs 3.js, a powerful 3D library that facilitates WebGL rendering to transform MRI data into interactive 3D models. Think of it as turning complex medical images into a more user-friendly and visually engaging experience. To interact with the application, users can navigate through 2D slices using the arrow keys, up and down for axial slices and left and right for sagittal slices, while page up and page down keys navigate through coronal slices. Users can also use the mouse wheel to scroll through slices within each canvas, making it as intuitive as browsing through your favorite photo album. For interacting with the 3D model, users can rotate by clicking and dragging the mouse, zoom in and out using the mouse wheel, and pan the view by right-clicking and dragging. It's similar to manipulating a 3D object in a video game, bringing a fun element to educational exploration. The backend is powered by Flask, serving HTML templates and MRI data from Nifty Files. The front end utilizes HTML, CSS, and JavaScript with 3.js to handle interactions and visualization. MRI slices are extracted from Nifty files and dynamically served, ensuring a seamless user experience that even a novice can navigate with ease. The Flask routes are set up to serve various types of data. The main page is served by the root URLs, rendering the index.html template. Slices are served through a route that takes the orientation and index as parameters, validating the request before serving the image file. Volumetric data is served as a JSON file, and there's also a route for serving sample data. Error handling is implemented to provide informative responses if something goes wrong, ensuring robust and user-friendly operation. Currently, the application includes a 3D skull model loaded using 3GLT floater. This model is scaled and aligned with the volumetric data, with functionality to toggle its visibility. This adds an extra layer of interactivity and detail to the application, enhancing the user's ability to visualize and understand the brain's structure. However, the way the volumetric data is currently rendered leaves room for improvement. The volumetric data is represented as a point cloud, where each voxel with a value greater than one is shown as a point in the 3D space. This method, while functional, often results in a model that appears sparse and lacking in detail, much like a connect-the-dots drawing that hasn't quite been finished. Improving this rendering can be approached in several ways. One method is to use more sophisticated volume rendering techniques, such as ray casting or slicing-based rendering, which can provide a more continuous and detailed visualization of the volumetric data. Ray casting, for instance, traces rays through the volume and accumulates color and opacity based on the data encountered along the ray's path. This approach can produce more realistic and informative images, akin to how advanced 3D graphics are rendered in video games or movies. Another improvement could involve using higher resolution volumetric data and more advanced interpolation methods to fill in the gaps between data points. This would create a smoother and more detailed model, enhancing, enhancing the user's ability to discern fine details within the brain structure. Additionally, applying shading and lighting techniques can add depth and contrast to the visualization, making it easier to differentiate between various anatomical features. Integrating these improvements would significantly enhance the application's ability to provide detailed and accurate visualizations making it a more powerful tool for educational and diagnostic purposes. It would transform the experience from merely exploring the brain's surface to diving deep into its complex and intricate structures, much like upgrading from a basic map to an interactive 3D atlas. In summary, while the current setup of the 3D Brain MRI viewer is already quite impressive, incorporating advanced rendering techniques and improving data resolution would elevate its functionality and user experience. By adopting these enhancements, the application can become an even more valuable resource for both medical professionals and enthusiasts alike, 
enabling a deeper and more comprehensive understanding of the brain's anatomy. Okay, so I'll share the code uh, at the below. But uh, generally, what we yeah we want all everything that was mentioned sounds sounds really good. Yeah, we'd like essentially to improve the way the volumetric data is being displayed. So any improvements uh, would be great. Great. Yeah, if we can do the skull as an overlay, that would be good. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure if we need to be changing how the data was pre-processed or we can just uh, and essentially do everything in uh, JavaScript on the fly. In theory, it should be possible to do it on the fly in JavaScript so it's more responsive. So we have a pre-processing and uh, this is the end. I'll just say the file main.js um this is the pre-processing python code and the main javascript if you can uh, give the bigger picture as well and how this can be improved primarily so that the rendering of the volumetric data looks much better see image attached Last time we were trying to make some improvements uh, to like light lightning conditions, uh, background color and the like, the size of each voxel. Uh, but that didn't seem to make much difference overall. We need to use a different approach altogether. So we generated some new code. Still. Uh, Testing this using nine Babel to load and manipulate the nifty files, extracting the axial, sagittal, and coronal slices, and we convert volumetric data into a JSON file. That should all be happening already. Don't expect much changes with that let me know if you did any changes i don't think so uh, perhaps not just repeating the same code would help and on the javascript end we're using a 3g js scene camera renderer and controls we fetch the volumetric data create point cloud for visualization we have interacting, rotating, zooming, and panning 3D model. That's fine. We do add lighting to the scene to enhance visibility. We handle loading and toggling visibility of a 3D skull model. Now that skull model, we don't actually have it. So ideally, we just use what's currently in the nifty file and we don't over complicate this. But uh, yes, if we have to create a 3D model just for the skull alone, we could um, consider that. But I'm not sure. Let me know how difficult that would be. Let me know what you think. Also, if you have any jokes on the topic, uh, keep them within the text. So relevant to the response yes we have keyboard and mouse events that should be fine so what did you actually change in the code if uh, anything and uh, yeah make sure you give me continuous sentences and no uh, dot points just continuous uh, paragraphs sorry sure let's dive into how we can improve the 3d brain mri viewer application focusing on enhancing the volumetric data rendering to create a more detailed and visually appealing representation. The goal here is to maintain the interactive functionality while addressing the limitations of the current point cloud approach. Current setup recap. 
the backend preprocessing using Nebable to load and manipulate nifty files and extract axial, sagittal, and coronal slices is sound and efficient. This part doesn't require significant changes since it already converts the volumetric data into a JSON file effectively. Therefore, we can leave this portion as is and focus our efforts on the JavaScript and 3.js part of the application. On the front end, we set up a 3.js scene, camera, renderer, and controls. We fetch the volumetric data, create a point cloud for visualization, and implement interactions for rotating, zooming, and panning the 3D model. Lighting conditions were tweaked to enhance visibility, and although these changes helped, they didn't fully address the issues with the point cloud's sparse and incomplete appearance. The 3D skull model was intended to add more context, but given the complexity, let's simplify by sticking to the data available in the nifty file. Improvements for volumetric data rendering. To improve the rendering of volumetric data, uh, we should consider alternative methods that provide a more continuous and detailed visualization compared to the point cloud approach. Ray casting or texture-based volume rendering can be more effective. These techniques allow for rendering the entire volume as a continuous entity rather than a collection of discrete points. Tap ray casting. Ray casting involves tracing rays through the volume data and accumulating color and opacity based on the data encountered along each ray's path. This method produces smooth and detailed images akin to how advanced 3D graphics are rendered in video games or CGI in movies. It's like upgrading from watching a movie on VHS to Blu-ray. Suddenly, everything is clearer and more detailed. Hack implementation changes. We'll implement a basic version of ray casting using 3.js and shaders. This requires setting up a 3D texture to store the volumetric data and writing a custom shader to handle the ray casting process. Updated JavaScript code with ray casting. Yeah, I'm having had trouble implementing the code. And so we trying to regenerate the whole thing. I currently have about 230 lines of JavaScript. Uh, let's see. Yes, it got rid of, I assume there is a placeholder. Obviously this would not get surprisingly. Everything else still works, but there is no volumetric data loaded and ray casting setup completed. There's too many errors in WebJL. Invalid operation. Can you fix? No. Let's do a precision specification for the sampler 3D in the fragment shader. WebGL 2.0, which is required for 3D textures, mandates explicit precision for sampler types. Why when fixing it? Why regenerate the whole code instead of uh, just fixing the relevant bit? I copilot as well. Okay, we have the thing working, but um, yeah, this is not any better whatsoever. An explanation. Uh, so re the result that we get for the volumetric data is not any better than what we had before. Actually, before we at least had uh, all the details of the brain. Now we have some sort of boxy structure. Can you explain? Boxy structure you're seeing is likely due to how the ray casting is being implemented and the way the 3D texture is being used in the shader. This issue often arises when the texture coordinates are not, correct, not correctly mapped or the volume data is not being sampled properly. Here's a more detailed explanation and a refined approach to improve the visualization of the volumetric data. Explanation. One, 3D texture mapping. The texture coordinates must correctly map the volume data. Explained. One, precision specification. Specified high precision for the sampler 3D type in the fragment shader to comply with WebGL 2.0 requirements. Two, ray marching. Implemented a basic ray marching algorithm within the fragment shader. This method steps through the volume, samples the 3D texture, and accumulates color and opacity values. 
Three, step size and sampling. Used a fixed step size for ray marching and sampled the texture at each step. This approach ensures more accurate representation of the volume data. Four, alpha threshold. Added an alpha threshold to terminate the ray marching loop early if the accumulated opacity exceeds a certain level, improving performance. By addressing these issues, the volumetric data should now render more accurately and without the artifacts you observed earlier. This improved visualization technique will help provide a clearer and more detailed view of the brain's structure. Okay, no, that didn't work. Uh, can we go to the previous version of the code as uh, outlined below? Uh, because it was actually producing something that uh, made more sense image attached as well if you have any jokes on the topic of a uh, struggle don't be shy all right let's revert to the previous version of the code as it produced better results i've included the code along with relevant comments and explanations to ensure clarity and to keep things lighthearted, i'll sprinkle in some jokes about our struggles JavaScript code for 3D brain MRI viewer. JavaScript slash basic setup for 3D view. Let scene equals new 3.scene. Let camera equals new 3.perspective camera 75. Window inner width, window inner height 0 0.1, 1000. Let renderer equals new 3.webgl renderer. Canvas document get element by eyed volumetric view. Renderer dot set clear color 000 slash. Set background color to black for visibility. Let controls new 3.orbit controls camera renderer.dom element controls.rotate speed equal 1.0 control skull visible equals skull visible skull mesh.visible equals skull visible console.log skull visibility set to skull visible slash slash call load skull mesh to load and add the skull mesh to the scene load skull mesh example usage of toggle skull visibility this could be tied to a button or key press event toggle skull visibility this is the end of main.js our comments on the code. Basic setup for 3D view. Initializes the 3JS scene, camera, renderer, and controls. Volumetric data loading. Fetches the volumetric data, creates a point cloud, and adds it to the scene. The voxel size and downsampling factor are used to adjust the resolution and performance. Lighting. Adds ambient and directional lighting to enhance visibility and contrast. Animation. Sets up an animation loop to continuously render the scene and update controls. Canvas setup for 2D views. Initializes 2D canvases for viewing axial, sagittal, and coronal slices. Functions for fetching and drawing slices based on user input are provided. Mouse and keyboard navigation. Enables navigation through the 2D slices using the mouse wheel and keyboard arrow keys. Goal mesh loading and visibility. Includes functions for loading a 3D skull mesh and toggling its visibility. This part is more flexible and can be customized based on specific needs. Focus on the topic of struggle. 1. Struggle with precision. Trying to get this volume rendering just right feels like threading a needle in the dark. Blindfolded. If only debugging came with a flashlight. 2. Lighting the way. I guess our volumetric data was feeling a bit shy and decided to hide in the shadows. Good thing we brightened up the place, now it's ready for its close-up. Uh, three handling errors. If only our volumetric data could speak, it would probably say, I didn't choose the error life. The error life chose me. By sticking with this version of the code, you maintain a more familiar and functional approach while ensuring better control over the visualization. The point cloud method, despite its simplicity, provides a more intuitive and immediate representation of the volumetric data. And uh, that's fine. That's the, all the code. It does work. Uh, okay. All the other three panels, uh, axial, sagittal, coronal view, uh, working fine as expected. However, we still would like to improve the way the volumetric data is being displayed and rendered. Control is okay. So mouse uh, panning, zooming in and out is all good. Uh, it's just the way it looks is not great. Any specific suggestions on that would be great. We already tried quite a few different things that didn't work. 
as you can see uh, earlier in this conversation uh, so any other approaches will be appreciated um, any humor is welcome as well to improve the volumetric rendering of the mri data and make it visually appealing while maintaining functionality we can try a different approach one effective technique for volumetric rendering in 3js is to use a method called volume rendering with texture-based slicing this method slices the volume into multiple layers and renders each slice with a texture it provides a more detailed and continuous visualization of the volumetric data. Here's how you can implement this approach. Improved sampling. The shader iterates through the volume, sampling the 3D texture and accumulating color and opacity values until a threshold is reached. This approach provides better control over the visualization. Three, lighting and camera. Adjusted the lighting intensity to improve visibility. The camera and control setup remains the same, ensuring the user can interact with the volume as expected. Jokes on the topic of struggle. One, MRI jigsaw puzzle. Rendering volumetric data is like trying to put together a jigsaw puzzle in the dark without knowing what the picture is supposed to look like. Two, shader drama. Our shaders were feeling a bit dramatic today, putting on a show of errors, but don't worry, we've taught them to behave. Three, debugging volumetric data. Debugging volumetric data feels like trying to find a needle in a haystack, except the needle is invisible and the haystack is constantly changing shape. By implementing this texture-based volume slicing approach, you should achieve a more visually appealing and accurate rendering of the volumetric MRI data. This method ensures smoother transitions and better details compared to point clouds or simple ray casting. The issue of the volumetric data being too dark can often be attributed to the shader not correctly accumulating the colors or the texture values not being correctly scaled. Let's adjust the fragment shader to ensure better visualization. We can increase the brightness and improve the contrast to make the volumetric data more visible. Here's the adjusted shader and JavaScript code with enhanced brightness and contrast handling. Adjusted JavaScript code, JavaScript let scene equals new 3.scene, let camera equals new three to perspective camera, 75, window inner width slash window dot inner height, 0 0.1 thousand. Let renderer, new three dot web GL renderer, canvas, document dot get element by ID, volumetric view, renderer dot set clear color, 0x0000. 0 0 0 0 0 0. Let controls equals new three dot orbit controls, camera, renderer dot am element, controls dot rotate speed equals 1.0, controls dot zoom speed equals 1.0, fetch slash volumetric, then response, response dot JSON dot data equals zoom. Let texture data equals new uint eight array data dot length data zero and length three dot zero length. Let index equals zero for let z equals zero z data dot length z plus plus for let y equals zero y data. Zero. A couple of things. Uh, so so uh, it did change the color, so it's now bright red. So that's better. I can actually see it. However, it's still that boxy thing that we have seen before doesn't look like the head or the brain or the skull uh, so how can we improve this uh, also from the image provider do we still need to do pre-processing with python or can we just uh, do everything in javascript and uh, load the nifty files uh, directly into JavaScript, into the front end. Uh, this is what uh, I've seen this being done before, so you can browse the web if needed. Any relevant jokes are welcome, but put them within the text. Yeah, we have directional light position that we might want to this this well it was better before well at least yeah it kind of doesn't make much difference a material do have material um i don't know we don't have that specific uh, parameter but uh, it should be actually the render a gamma correction is enabled for more realistic lighting okay I'm uh, not sure entirely where would that go. Yeah, that gamma is 
not in the correct location, is it? Oh, lots of errors. Uh, lots of errors. Don't think that will uh, do much difference. To improve the volumetric rendering and make the data visualization more accurate and less boxy, we need to handle the nifty file directly in JavaScript. This approach can provide more flexibility and better integration for real-time rendering. Here's how we can achieve this. 1. Load nifty files in JavaScript. Use a library like Nifty Reader JS to load and parse nifty files directly in the browser. 2. Volume rendering. Implement volume rendering with 3JS using texture-based texture -based slicing or ray casting. We'll focus on improving the slicing method. Loading nifty files in JavaScript. First, we need to include the Nifty Reader JS library to handle nifty files in JavaScript. We'll load this library from a CDN. JavaScript code HTML, doc, TML, lang, and head. Metrarset UTF viewport content width device width initial scale one point. Title 3D brain MRI viewer. Stripihes slash cdn.cloudflow.com slash x slash 3.js slash r128 slash slash cdn.js deliver.net slash npm nifty reader chat point 3.4 dist nifty dash 3js.org slash js slash controls slash orbit controls at a canvas ID volumetric view. Basic setup for 3D view let scene equals new 3.scene. Let camera equals new three perspective camera 75 window dot inner width window dot inner height 0 0.1 1000. Let renderer equals new three dot webgl renderer canvas document get element by id volumetric view. Renderer dot set size window width window inner height renderer dot set clear color 0x0000000. 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Let controls new three dot orbit controls camera renderer dot dom element controls dot rotate speed equals 1.0 controls dot zoom speed equals 1.0. Load and parse the nifty file fetch uh, path to your nifty file dot nii dot then response response dot array buffer dot then buffer equals let nifty header equals not read header buffer let nifty image equals nifty dot read image nifty header buffer let data equals new u and eight array nifty image let dimensions equals nifty header dot dim slice four let texture equal new three data texture three d data dimension dimensions one dimensions two texture dot format equals three red format texture dot type equals three dot unsigned byte type Texture.min filter equals 3.linear filter. Texture.mag filter equals 3.linear filter. Texture.unpack alignment equals 1. Let materials new either shader material uniforms. U data value texture. U size value new 3.vector3 three dimensions 1, dimensions 2. U brightness value 1.5. U contrast value 1.5. Vertex shader varying v3 v position void main v position equals position gl position equals projection matrix to model view matrix to vec4 position 1.0 fragment shader precision high p float precision high p sampler 3d uniform sampler 3d u data uniform v3 u size uniform float u brightness uniform float u contrast varying v3 v position void main v3 text chord equals v position slash u size vec4 color texture u data text chord Color.rgb equals to U brightness. Color.rgb equals close to 0.5 to max U contrast to your point zero is 0.5. GL frag color equals VEC4 color.rgb 1.0. Side 3 dot backside transparent true. Let geometry equals new 3 dot box geometry dimension 0 dimensions 2 1. Let mesh equals new 3 mesh geometry material. Scene dot add mesh. Controls dot target set to 2 dimensions 1 2 dimensions 2. Controls dot update. Console dot log volumetric data loaded and brightness contrast adjusted. Catch. Console dot error. An error occurred while loading the volumetric data error. Let ambient light equals new 3 dot ambient light 0x4040. Ambient light intensity equals 0 0.5. Scene dot add ambient light. Let directional light equals new three directional lights FFF one. Directional light dot position dot set one one one. Normalize directional light dot intensity equal 0.75. Scene directional light. Camera dot position set 128 128 256. Camera dot look at new three dot vector three. 128, 128, 128, function animate, request animation frame, animate, controls dot update, renderer dot render scene camera, animate. Half explanation. One, nifty reader library. We include the nifty reader JS library to read and parse nifty files in the browser. Two, loading and parsing. The nifty file is fetched and parsed into a 3D texture that can be used in 3JS. Three, we create a 3D texture and use a shader to apply brightness and contrast adjustments for better visualization. Focus on the topic of struggle. One, boxy brain. 
Our volumetric rendering was so boxy, it looked like the brain had decided to move into a cubicle. Time to think outside the box. Two, shader struggles. Debugging shaders is like trying to solve a Rubik's cube in the dark. Every time you think you're close, it turns out you're not even on the right side. Three, bright ideas. Our volumetric data was so dark. It was like trying to find a black cat in a coal mine. Brightening things up is like bringing a flashlight. Suddenly, everything makes sense. By handling the nifty files directly in JavaScript and rendering the volume data with texture-based slicing, you should achieve a more accurate and detailed visualization. This approach allows for better control and real-time adjustments, improving the overall user experience. Yeah, we'll be finishing in a sec. Uh, yeah, we didn't make uh, much improvement to the MRI rendering bit. And that's unfortunate. We need to use some sort of a uh, different, different strategy for it. Different approach. Tried a few different things already. Yeah, interestingly, so everything else uh, works okay. Uh, I'm not sure if we're doing, if we're relying much on pre-processing or not. Not sure what's connecting the two sources. Uh, we using nifty files. They're being rendered okay. We are pre-processing them in Python, but I'm not sure if that's required because I've seen another example where uh, nifty files, even compressed nifty files, are loaded directly into JavaScript front end. But in this case, and in this case, it's working fine. Um, but the volumetric model, which is in the nifty data, is uh, yeah just rendered in a weird fashion. To know why is that happening? So my understanding is meant to actually look like uh, so. There's this open source stuff by well should have a link. Because that's where we get our data from. Uh, open Neuro. Open Neuro. If you go MRIs, pretty much any, pretty much any MRI. Don't know why it's loading forever. Yeah, the actual MRI scans are really quick to, uh, to display. Yeah, just waiting for this website to go down. Yeah, we could make them uh, larger eventually. Yeah, this would not work at the moment. Yeah, I need to, um, yeah, I need to fix the way it's being uh, rendered. I'm just wondering what happened to Open Neuro. <laughs> it would be funny if all this uh, website goes down. I think it's uh, originally it's uh, NIH uh, founded the Brain Initiative, so it should work. No, well, it's well if a website doesn't work. By the way, if mine doesn't work. If mine doesn't work, uh, hit on Control F5. See if it helps. Normally it helps, but not in this case because it's running. You can actually see uh, what is it running. Well, it's blocking third-party cookies, but that's okay. And need to look at the network when loading. What something is being loaded forever? There's some Google traces and things. There's this GIF. Um, something is up. Was working yesterday. Well, that's not my site, so I'm gonna be fixing it. And uh, this is my site. Yes. <laughs> Hope it. it's fine because it has a lot of data uh, on the website, the uh, Open Euro. Uh, is anything else working? Uh, EEG, obviously we're also interested in EEG. That's so loading for some time. Looks like the website is down. So, oh, I'm also using an ad blocker. Might want to... Uh, yeah, that might have been the problem. No. Control 5. MRI. So the head blocker is not blocking anything. Uh, let it run, but I can't do anything about it. If it goes down, it goes down, right? Um, we do. <laughs> well, it will be unfortunate because it has a lot of uh, MRI data 
and the EG data. Uh, hopefully it's uh, been in another repository somewhere as well. And yeah, by any case, it's the only site I can actually do something about. So if you checked it out and you have any complaints, questions, requests, uh, do let me know. Yeah, the live simulation is there. I was trying to do um, arrangements which will encourage um, live birth uh, while using as little water as possible. So if you wait long enough, <laughs> like this stream, uh, been going on for almost five hours. Yeah, there's life there. But then hopefully it picks up on um, a life from like another incubator. You can call them incubators. Um, and hopefully it will just keep uh, growing. Yeah, there's something going on there. I wasn't clicking or anything, so I'm not clicking on the screen. Yes, you can add your sand, water, rock, life, or remove stuff. Um, but it should just do its own thing. Yeah, open your still loading. Uh, I think we can forget about that one. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm not signed in or something. That's, uh, um, that data is from one of the Open Euro repositories, just an example. What I was trying to show is if you take copies and craft your own space between, you could shape a brain to anything you want. Well, right, except I wasn't, uh, okay. So those are just the nifty slices uh, images. I did do pre-processing to it, but uh, uh, probably not required. We could uh, probably get rid of it. It should still work. Um, the problem I'm having is with this uh, volumetric data. So this is what we have in a file, but it shouldn't look like that. Well, I mean, so you see the details of the of the brain and the skull in it, which is fine, but the rendering of it. So what I was trying to show is how Open Neuro doing it it's super quick it's just in uh, html i have a video of it i can dig it out right we don't yeah we don't have to look at the brains and the shape of this well yeah so once uh, okay those in theory the if accurately uh, plotted well that's another way of looking at it i don't know it looks like um, the universe or something could be expanding or collapsing onto itself and stuff like that yeah we don't have to view it in the shape of a brain well doesn't it make sense <laughs> yeah uh yeah we can remap uh, anything to anything but uh, yeah we're like remapping uh, um, eg into music does it still work should work might uh, a volume can reduce the volume a bit you can scroll through the file so this is actually yeah related on the comment of you don't have to look at the brains and the shape they are uh, this one you could you also don't have to uh, look at eeg uh, just uh, on the screen or you can map it into music sound um, and this is what a seizure sounds like. If you actually do auto volume and auto duration, it actually will go louder during seizure. And softer when there is no seizure. Um, yes, so we definitely don't have to look at things the way they are. Oops, that would be uh, too loud. Yeah, Open Neuro is down or something. It's copyrighted to Stanford Center for 
reproducible neuroscience. Well, so much for it being reproducible. The website is not running. Yeah. Maybe there was not enough support. It went down. Uh, we could load a different, uh, a different nifty file. Should have uh, a bunch of them. And see what uh, a difference does it make. The pre-processing. All ah, right. No, the pre-process, the pre-processing in this case is important because we're turning the nifty data into images. Um, we have them uh, over here. So we have the data. We have an image for each. Uh, uh, so that's what the. That's what um, Python pre-processing code does. But in theory, we don't even have to do it. The volumetric data is this JSON file. This is what you see here. There might be an issue with it. The question is, are there any a JSON native uh, libraries that can pass nifty files directly so we don't have to turn them into images. Oh, this wasn't recording, wasn't transcribed. I'll send that one and start a new one. So question, quick question, uh, do we uh, have any JavaScript libraries similar do we have any JavaScript libraries similar to what Open Neuro has doing on the website that can pass nifty files, potentially even compressed nifty files directly in front end? So we don't have to pre process. Doing ray casting. Ray casting. But ray casting didn't really work. Is there nifty reader JS? Nifty reader JS. Is it a thing? That's yeah, adding everything into all the code into the HTML file is kind of nice because then we can uh, have everything in one place. Oh, well, it's good for prototyping. Uh, yeah, we don't have orbit controls. Need to make sure we have orbit controls as well, don't we? Um, but I want to check that a nifty reader. Yeah, that nifty reader is not available. Just hallucinating, hallucinating libraries for me. Uh, this uh, link doesn't have any uh, any JavaScript file in it. Go back, go back. That's the last working thing we had. Right, reprocessing with uh, uh, sorry, bra uh, Entering nifty files directly in the browser without pre-processing in Python sounds great. Those links have to work though. Let's go back in this. Uh, right, so it actually has something in nifty renderer, nifty JS. No, not with tensor. No, I can try open new in our browser. <laughs> Why is there a, a no, still doesn't work. Anyway, we'll have to finish for now. I'd leave you with that one for a bit. And the 3D model, uh, let me know what you think. Uh, put your comments uh, below. I'll try answering them later. I'll say bye bye for now just to be sure and uh, yeah enjoy life.